for a refresher for anyone that needs it. We are heading to this little village that's near the P in the word province. An unnamed fishing village where the people that you liberated are, are originally from, except for a small number of them that are not. Welcome to episode 14 of Valinaria Chronicles. This episode is called Too Many Villagers is a Good Problem. I'm your oh, DM, yeah. Joseph Dunlap. Real quick, everyone just say your name and the character you're playing. I am Tristan and I'm playing Gaz. I'm Derek and I'm playing Rook. I'm Zan and I'm playing Mahal. I'm Bree and I'm playing Isarel. Uh, Danielle and I'm playing uh, Marcero. As a summary for where we've been to get to this point in episode 14, uh, let's summarize really, really, really crude short summary. They are being hailed as heroes, our five heroes of this story over in the village of Gamut. You can see in the middle of our map here uh, for for killing some very rough, tough, big monsters called kobolds. And since then, their reputation has brought them all kinds of attention, including a uh, village person named Narala, who says, if you are heroes, you can rescue my entire fishing village from a orc camp and I can't pay you, no big deal. So, <laughs> Gaz, or as he's called now, uh, he's Bo now, isn't he? I need to change that at some point. Uh, he said, I'm Bo to the paid. Orcs. I'm Lance again now. Oh, okay. You're Lance again. Okay. Let's pull up your page. I need to just have a little thing off to the side of your aliases. Yeah. You're just going to need a list, a big long list. But he took issue with this being done, as I called it, in episode, I think, 12, Pro Bono Liberation. But, uh, you know, there was a little bit of a sponsorship put together. All they had to do was tell anyone they come across about these two businesses in a town that the people they come across are never going to. And now they have uh, braved the orc camp of tribe Blood no, Clan Blood Badger, where they challenged the chief and said, we want you to give up all of your slaves, all of them. But what that resulted in after they defeated the chief in the challenge, that was uh, Mahal and Rook, who were the uh, primary and secondary of the challenge. They were given not just several dozen, possibly even a hundred villagers from the fishing village, but also half as many in people they don't even know anything about. And now we are leaving the orc camp and we're trying to <coughs> get them to safety, I guess. But we also have other issues to deal with. So that is where I'm going to let you guys step in. So we're leaving the work camp now. Yes, I believe the last thing that happened was Rogiza here punched you in the arm, called you an orc curse word elf, and then left. And that, I think that's the last thing that happened. Mm hmm All right. I guess I'll just... Uh, uh, look to Mazira for a moment and say do you think we're better served taking all of them back to the village and then figuring out where the others are to go or asking them now uh, that's a good question I don't really know but we should, we should just yeah we should probably just ask them you've got somewhere in the range of 100 to 150 people just sort of huddled in a crowd about a hundred feet outside the orc camp looking at you. Mm -hmm. What time of day is it? I assumed it was the middle of the night because we had, like, we were supposed to sleep. Oh yeah, you were given blankets and stuff. And yeah. Then and then... came to go and put you with the slaves. <laughs> yeah, and that's when we challenged. So I think it's probably pretty late at night or, or very early morning at this point. Yeah, let's say it's somewhere around uh, midnight or a little bit after. Well, at minimum, we should probably figure out a way to get these people somewhere to safety so we can sleep for the night. It had taken us four days to get out here, I think. I think it was somewhere around three. Not sure exactly, but I think it was about three days. Okay. So we're going to need to bed them down for two nights at least before we get back to the fishing village, and that assumes that they're all fine with heading there first. Additional issue... I believe those three days were on Frard's wagon. No, we left that in the the village. Yeah, I'm we pretty sure you sent Frard back after you got in certain a certain ways into the scrubland. 
Nope. We, we left hadn't that paid in him the to go any further. Yeah, he wouldn't go with us further than the village oh, because right, we don't yeah. need him yep. to the village and back. Hazard pay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So no, we did we did the entire second portion of the journey, which three days about on foot. But maybe, Israel, you like talking to people. Would you like to let them know what's going on? Um, you about going it. back to the the village. Yes. Yeah, I can ask them. So I'll I'll go I'll head over there and I will try to suss out who is the uh, one who looks least worried and panicky, <laughs> and and say, "Uh, hey, you there? Um, we figured we would take everyone back to the fishing village that." Some of you are from. Um, is that a would that work for you, or do you have another place that you want to go? That's possibly, hopefully, nearby. I would very much like to get home. Yes. Where is your home? The fishing village. Do you know where these other people are from? Oh, you mean all the people who are already with the clan? I have no idea. Yes. He turns to you and says, so what is it that you and your group are going to do? Do you have a camp we can go to or anything like that? Unfortunately, we don't exactly have a camp. We're, you know, we're, tr we travel a lot and we just camp where we want to at night. Um, but our, our hope was to bring you guys safely back to your village. I mean, that sounds very, very good to me. My understanding is we're several days at least away from there. It's been a while since we were abducted. Yes, that is the unfortunate uh, aspect to this entire situation. So uh, how how is everyone doing that you know of in your group at least? Is there a way you think that they'll be able to uh, make the journey? Um, are we going to see any problems? Uh, do we need to, like, what should we prepare for? Well, how did you and your group get here? Well, we maybe hired someone with a wagon to bring us to at least your village. But he's not with us, unfortunately. We walked here from the village. Mm -hmm. He turns to you and acknowledges you, uh, Gaz, and yeah. and uh, then continues talking to Isarel, who he seems to think is in charge. So you walked. I guess that's what we'll do as well. I don't recall there being any major hazards aside from, and he gestures towards the camp. Oh, well, that that's wonderful then. Yes, we walked too, and you know what? If we can try to have people keep up a, a decent pace, we can get there faster. A decent pace. He, turn, he, he, he uh, raises his eyebrow at you. A decent pace. Yes, that's... That's what I mean by uh, how I wanted to know how your your group is doing. Is like, is anyone sick? Will there be anyone that needs you know some extra assistance so we can get going in the morning? Oh, very much so. We were all enslaved for at least a few weeks, if not any gestures to a few other people around him. None worse for wear. Ears. Right. All right. So if you'd like, then uh, I can. I can show you around, have you sort of meet a few people and get an eye for what's going on here, but uh, we really aren't in any shape to make any decisions ourselves. Right. Why don't, if you don't mind, I think my friend should come along and help, uh, because we all, we all came to try to save you, and I'm sure all of us could be of some assistance. And I... And, you know, just between you and me, some of my friends want to get back to a, a different um, quest that we were on. So we would love to help you get home as safely and as quickly as possible. I'm, I'm all for that, yes. So then he gestures to the three, two of you. Says, uh, right this way, what was your name again? My name was Isarel. Okay, Isarel and company uh, come this way. And he sort of shows you around, introduces you to a few people, says, this is Isarel, our liberator. Uh, Joseph, I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, when we came here, like, we were trying to find the camp. So were we, like, kind of zigzagging around trying to find tracks and things, or did we basically end up beelining it towards the camp? 
It was more or less a beeline based off of the information you'd received and some of the signs that you saw. And in fact, I don't know if I mentioned it, I think I did, you had even seen signs of a previous camp. Okay. Uh, we found this place because we located uh, scouts and followed them back. Right, oh, that right. was the last leg of it, yes. I was just uh, trying to get a sense of if the return journey might be a little shorter if we were having to, if we were spending time, you know, going slower or having to find clues and things, because I couldn't remember. If it was just the five of you, it would definitely be a quicker trip. Need to make sure that they're going to be all right to bed down with no protection at night. Yes, but how are we supposed to do that? We I'm were not, not expecting all these extra people. I, I don't know how we're supposed to protect even the hundred that we were expecting with the weather the way it's been. What do you say we take care of them for tonight? And in mm -hmm. the morning, we ask if, how everyone is feeling and doing, and if any are trained in any sort of protective you know combat and they can help us out and we can take shifts uh helping people out and and keeping watch at night probably the sooner we do that the better the villager that you were yep, talking to kind of turns over and says is there any way we could get away from this camp i mean i was hoping that we'd be walking and, and doing this not anywhere near the camp but since we haven't started walking i just nod <laughs> They were, they were just yes, huddled, waiting go. to be told what to do because they're all just tired and beaten down. Uh, hey, uh, follow us, everyone. Come here. All right, a crowd of 150 people starts following you. Heading back. They were of varying ages from what seems like eight years old to 60. I'm going to assume that we're going to find a respectable distance from the camp and then start making some decisions? Yes, I would say so. Okay. Um, we're still... The scrubland goes on for quite a while, all the way to the, the village, correct? Yeah, up until it reaches the river, that's around when it starts to become greener. Okay, let's have our group at least look for some sort of slight hillside or, like, saddle. Um, so that we're at least, like, a little sheltered from, I don't know, wind and stuff like that. Okay, uh, tell me what you're going to look for, and then definitely you and Zira and anyone else who wants to can make a survival check to find it. Well, I'm thinking kind of like what's in your picture there. There's like a, a divot, a, a saddle in the uh, the land there. If yeah. we can hunker down in something like that, that'd be great. Make the roll so you can find something that's a good enough for the large group of you. Survival... Wouldn't it be great if I rolled, like, crap like that last time? Wouldn't that be great? Uh, <laughs> uh, I rolled well enough. 13 plus 5, so I got an 8. Yeah, that's good enough. You find an area that does seem to have a little bit of cover. Minimal, but good enough. Perfect. Uh, All the right. people are sort of taking care of each other the way that they have been under the whips of the orcs. But they're really just existing at this point. We're just going to cast um, Goodberry four times and pass out uh, 21 berries. So That's to 21 work. and uh, just tell them to eat it. Okay, uh, th this will keep you going for a while. Uh, eat it. it. It's small, but it, 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 you know, it's more filling than it looks. <laughs> they pass it around sort of communally to the youngest and, and oldest and weakest of the group. That's exactly what I was hoping you were going to do, Zira. We're going to need to chip in our rations, too. We don't have nearly yeah. enough food for this group. Yeah, they re look really weak. I've got 15 days of trail rations. What about right. you? 14. Mm, I only have five. But I can go out and hunt. So while you're having this conversation and the people are sort of taking care of themselves and each other, there is a group of adults that comes over to you. They kind of want to just touch base with you since, you know, you're stuck together. So you have the man you were already talking to plus a couple that seems to be pretty close to middle-aged and then a few other people that just look very uh, strong and capable. 
Right. Are there any hunters in this group? A few of us do know how to use a bow. Unfortunately, we do not have any. Well, I can supply at least one bow. If we can have some of you go out and hunt, while the rest of us stay back to join you know, the group. A keen-eyed woman who has uh, somewhat muscular forearms reaches for the bow. All right, I hand her my short bow and uh, arrows. Can anyone throw knives? I have plenty. There's a man who just turns and waves like, yep, that's me. Yeah, there you go. The couple introduces themselves. Uh, they say that they are the Idens. They say that uh, all they really have left is the village, and they want to help it any way they can. <clears throat> um, sorry, are we doing this right now? While like, walking, are we not going to? Are we not going to sleep? Uh, we... The the hundred fifty or so people sans this contingent are currently bunkering down for the night, and these adults wanted to come and just touch base with you rather than just go to sleep without having some sort of plan. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So they're all wanting to find something that they can do to help you. Cool. Um. Oh, actually, I can offer my longbow and arrows as well, and I can use my herbalist profession to try to see if there's any herbs nearby to help anyone for cuts or wounds or anything like that. Okay. Go ahead and make a few checks for that. I'm sure that there's a use for it. Okay. What am I? What am I doing? Check. You're using herbalism as a as a heal sort of thing. Oh yeah, I suppose I can't, huh? It's not the. I can do heal though. I can you just could roll do heal. heal I could also let you do craft for that. Let me let me roll for heal. Uh, uh I can also heal. Uh, I forgot I had a. I've, yeah, I that, forgot I had a decent yeah. um uh, uh, advantage in in heal. Uh, Danielle, are you saying that you've got uh, heal skill or some healing spells? Uh, the heal skill. Okay, go ahead and make like five rolls. I can do that as well. Perfect, that's great. Five rolls each of us? Yeah, that that seems like a good number. I'm gonna write these down for <laughs> for you. <laughs> hey, that's better. Okay. I got my five. Sam. Hey, hit me with them. Um, nine, seven, twenty-six, thirteen, fifteen. Uh, I got seventeen, eighteen, twenty-one, sixteen, twenty-six, plus That's seven. Some sweet healing knowledge. Twenty-two, nine, eleven, six, and twenty-one. The overall really good rolls here on average uh so the people are very pleased to have had your aid and they're starting to view you not just as liberators but as as uh gentle healers and and uh, natural leaders so as the night wanes uh you know we get into like one o'clock in the morning or whatever most of them are asleep a few of the adults are unable to and will hang out with whoever's on watch for the night i'll i'll take a watch I will too. I met with this many people will all need to take watches. Yeah, it's very possible. And you've got some adults here or, uh, from the village who are willing to help out with that. They even suggest that, as ironic as it seems, you may need to turn them into a clan before they get to the village. They should save their strength. They're gonna need it for the walk. We've got enough elves that can pull watches all night long. You've got a few who are quite insistent. They're not going to be able to sleep. How about we make a deal? How about you try to get some sleep, and if that doesn't work, then you can help us out. Can I have some water and a snack? Let me... I... Do I have a snack? <laughs> I was just making a joke about kids not going to bed. Uh, right. They're doing as you as you tell them because you are in fact in charge. Uh, I can create water. If that helps. That very much will help. 
to get all the thirstiest people to stand together, and you just fill them with water. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't going to say anything, but uh, they are hungry and thirsty. Um, we're feeding who we can. It seems that uh, Zira is taking care of the water issue. Yeah, once we've established enough of a routine with the journey, I'm not going to make you go through the minutia, but there is a lot to address just from the get-go. There's a lot to address. We don't have nearly the rations to support this many people for even a day, so they're all going to be pushing through starvation by the time we get to the third day. As I... long as we can find a source of water, we might need to just get straight north so that we hit the river earlier. It's not that a would, bad idea. That would give us a water source. Uh, I, I can give us a lot of water. Enough to feed 155 people? Uh, let's see, can I? I think I can create so much. People need like 30 ounces of water a day. There's going to be problems if people don't reach that quota. Uh, delirium, fatigue, uh, hallucinations. Yeah. Well, I definitely vote then that we go straight north and try to get closer to the river as soon as possible. It'll make the trip take longer, but we'll have water that entire time once we hit the river. That will probably make it much more survivable. It's probably the best idea. I'm trying my best not to interject unless you've got an NPC that you're talking to, by the way. Mm. I should be able to create uh, 18 gallons, uh, gallons of uh, water per day. More if I push my magic. I think you've got this night covered enough that you can get the watches going and give people some water and then get them to go to sleep. I think that covers that. I will say that during the night, you observe casually, uh, occasionally orc scouts that are within view. They're not coming to check up on you, it's just their routes, and they go out of their way to avoid you. If, during the night, you happen to see uh, an orc scouting group, did you want to specifically, Gaz, get a better look at them? And then uh, I needed you to make a spot check, and what did you get on the spot check? 16. Okay. I rolled a percentile, and it was very specifically high. So, yes, uh, off in the distance, you believe that you spy the muscular build of the orc that you befriended. And, uh, are they headed this way, or are they keeping their distance? The group of scouts, other than their leader, is intentionally going out of their way not to have their patrol path intersect with your camp, Good. but their leader does turn and look over in the direction of your group. I would tell whoever else is on watch um, to keep the perimeter <clears throat> I saw something that I need to investigate oh uh sure uh go ahead okay. I'll be back in a minute in a few minutes do you want to take winter with you hey thanks for the yeah, follow that's a good idea thank you uh was that a yes yeah I said that would be a good idea thank you yeah uh winter go oh winter Mm -hmm. So, okay. uh, Rodiza sees you and the dog heading in her direction, so she waits for you and tells her scout group to go on ahead. Uh, when we get to her location, uh, I would have the dog heal and say, Rogisa, I didn't expect to see you again. Well, I'm kind of in the doghouse right now. So, Did you night duty. You got in trouble for helping us? She nods. Are they aware of how much you helped us, or is it just some insubordination? There, there were people looking for someone to take this out on. I happen to seem to be close to you. Alright, well, I'm sorry that you're being punished for us, but... I did want to take the moment to again express how grateful my group is for your help. I, uh, I wonder if there isn't a bit more information you might be able to give me about this area. We've got a lot of people to transit 
and not a lot of resources to rely on. I wanted to know if there were a better route to get there. We're gonna head straight for the river so that we have water. Is there any dangerous animals that we should know about ahead of time? She squats to talk to you as the scout group continues. Kind of looks over at them for a second, eyes your camp, and then points north. She says, there is a group of caves between here and the river. I believe that you can spend tomorrow night there, and you'll reach the river not that long afterward. The river's further than I'd hoped, but thank you. You don't know of any dangerous animals that might be in the caves? We'll have to remove them if that's the case. The last time I saw them, they were empty, but I can't make any guarantees about that. Hmm. Possibly wolves, coyotes, maybe? Entirely possible. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not something I would have considered a hazard with a clan of orcs, but with essentially what you have, a clan of freed slaves, Untra I'm not sure. Untrained humans. Um... <laughs> Then, no, I just, I only ask because I'm not familiar with the area. I don't know what the fauna is like. It's not very much of anything, but definitely but... wolves and coyotes should be a concern. All right. Then we'll continue with this plan. You should watch out for any stragglers in your group being left alone. We'll make sure to have rear guard to keep anyone from falling behind. Yes, if you travel in a formation, it should be fine. Excellent. Thank you for everything. I if we're ever you're back, welcome. if you ever need anything, and you happen to find us <laughs> or passing through again, we're in your debt. Yes, in whatever likelihood that is. Yes. I'll like surreptitiously offer a hand for a shake. I don't know how they usually do it, but I will look uncertain of myself as I do so. <laughs> so you lift your hand towards her. Yeah. She looks at your hand and sort of furrows an eyebrow and then reaches out and crushes it. Uh, I'm glad we were able to help each other a bit. Yeah, she pats mm -hmm. you on the shoulder and then joins her scout group. Uh. <laughs> oh. Come on, Winter. We gotta go back. <laughs> Uh, Winter licks your hand. Ah, thank you. Slop, slop, blep, blep. <laughs> I return to the camp. Anything else for this particular night? I think we're no. good. Other than making sure nobody's accidentally wandering off? No. Fortunately, uh, everyone's either too exhausted or or um, restless and wants to help you. <sighs> Stop trying to help <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, the mana regeneration system. You want to use that? Uh, yeah, uh, you did send it to me, so uh, I was uh, thinking of using it. Well, I have been. I'm going to say that if that's how you're going to get them water, that should work. It's just that every yeah. day you're going to end completely depleted. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I won't have you do any, any major roles on that. We should assume that there's a fair amount of water being made through this, even though there's a percentile chance of failure. Okay, let's make it morning. All right. So talk me through what the plan is this morning, because this is going to be pretty formulative. Uh, I'm going to formative, seek out... Sorry. I'm, sorry, yes. I'm going to um, seek out uh, Israel since I have uh, uh, kind of made her the, the leader of this group, of this group of people. So here's a question. Do you want to go with them believing that she's the leader, or do you want her to be the official liaison? I don't mind if they believe she's the leader. That was kind of my purpose in addressing her the way I did. Yeah, that that's fine. She's friendlier than I am. She'll be a better leader. She's a good face. <laughs> and if I'm not the leader, then I can be the bad guy sometimes <laughs> to get things done without, like, ruining morale. In any event, I would go find Israel. I got some information last night. Did you know? If we head straight north from here toward the river, we should be able to make it in two days' time. Well, by the morning after, uh, tomorrow morning. 
tonight we can weather the night in a set of caves that the orcs told me about. Ooh, that sounds well. Wait. They should, they should offer good protection, but yeah. That's what I was concerned about. Uh, caves are, sure, yes, they're great for shelter and all, but I have a feeling that not all caves are good. At least that's what I've read and heard about from travelers all the time. So do we know if there's any danger in these caves? Mm, the orcs were only able to tell me that the last time they were by the caves, they were uninhabited. But we should not assume that to be the case. We should expect that there might be some wild animals we'll have to move. Yes, yes, that's a very good call. Um, but you know what? If they're the right kind of wild animals, then we could just kill them and use them for food. Also an option that would help solve another problem we're going to run into. So what do we want to do next? Do we just uh, see if, if everyone's about ready to go and recommend we start walking? Yeah, you tell them to get up and move out. You gotta issue the orders. All right. So I will, I guess, just go out, I don't know, on the top top part of the hill there and uh, yell down to everyone and let them know they, that we're ready to go. We've got a plan to get them home. So let's go. You are approached by that same group that spoke to you last night. Uh, that was the it couple didn't. in their middle ages and a few of the uh, able-bodied people with knives and bows now. And they're asking uh, if you have any plan for hunting groups or rear guard or anything like that. Ah, we do not have uh, hunting groups just yet. However, I myself like to hunt, and I was planning on doing that at least once or twice a day here. Uh, rear guard, we can uh, have one of our one of our wonderful uh, agents here help I'll out. I'll be taking care of it. Yeah, see. He's he's helpful, and if anyone in the group feels up to it, uh, they are more than welcome to to uh, talk to to Rook over there. You seem like uh, maybe this is not this, this is probably your first time with a group of this size. Uh, it says one of the older ones, which is the uh, husband of the middle-aged couple. I mean, yes, you you have me there. I grew up. I grew up uh, an orphan, and I don't really <laughs> interact with a lot of people. And I'll, gonna come I'll up and like be... grab her shoulder. May we offer some advice? The couple says. Oh, please. We're somewhere in, in the area of 130 to 150 people, and just a few scouting parties hunting is not going to be enough. You need to split us into groups and have us take turns hunting during the day. Um, is everyone capable of hunting? Um, well, we many of us are from a fishing village, so we're used to fishing as our primary means of getting food that that and berries, but there are a fair number of us who are proficient with a bow. And they indicate some of the younger people who have received bows from you. Which is great for the all of two bows that we have. They'll make do. We can make some makeshift weapons if we need to, but the problem is, as we're traveling, we will need to be actively seeking food pretty much the entire day. But we can take care of that. How about I designate you to set up the groups? Because that does sound like a good idea. You're right. We we will definitely need to be sending out groups as we're as we're going. They look at you a little confused that you're entrusting them with this, but they nod. They reintroduce themselves to you, by the way. Uh, they are the Idens, I-D-D-O-N. And what did you do in the fishing village? We were fishers. That's, that's been did our you... family line. You You came forward to talk to us more readily than some of the others here. Did you hold any sort of pos uh, position? Let's just say that this entire thing is deeply personal to us. Right. I would respect that it's deeply personal to all of you since you were taken from your homes. For many of us, it's worse than that. I don't. I don't want to 
throw you into something that you're not comfortable with then. I just assumed since you were coming forward, you knew what you were doing in terms of hunting. I'm more than willing to join you in one of, uh, in one of the groups. We both come from large families. We even had a child, so we're used to being administrative in capacity, so we can help you. All right, perfect. I, well, I vote we set up the groups and then we start heading out. They seem to know a fair amount of the main movers and shakers in this group, so they're going to go and delegate as you have delegated to them. Basically, Step. you've got uh, every group of uh, 20 to 30 is going to have someone who's sort of um, moving them wherever Isarel says. It's definitely good to be using them as resources, especially as they know the people and their skills and abilities better than we do. But you don't want to look like you're giving up too much of your authority to them. Yes. It's not so much that you're commanding and controlling people, but these people are, well... They, their morale stems from feeling like someone knows what they're doing, and that right now is us, and if we look weak, that's going to make them scared. Yes, that's why I'm definitely going to hunt for them and with them, and I'm so glad, Brooke, that you said that you would uh, take the rear guard. Yeah, I'm one of the slower in the group, given my armor, so it makes sense for me to be at the back, to be able to catch any other stragglers. I yes. do need to know a few things here, because it seems like you're best served. Now, we're all in the same area, so we're not splitting the party, but you're best served, each of you sort of taking a role actively in some aspect of what's going on. So if we've got Isarel sort of leading the group with Rook as her advisor, and then we've got Rook in the rear guard, then that would mean uh, Mahal and Azira are sort of among the people. Or would yeah, Zero Sarah's want to be more of a scout? Uh, Zero uh, would be support for now. We've got a long column of people, so we're going to want people, you know, our people at the flanks, armed and observant. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very, very smart. I was going to be off to the, to the side to make sure nothing came from that direction either. I uh, can act as scout. Uh, if we have anyone amongst the people... Um, should any injuries occur that may slow travel, um, let me know and I'll see what I can do. I have some ability to heal again now that it's, you know, the next day. It's also important to travel at the rate of our slowest members. We don't want anyone falling behind. One other thing, you'll need to make sure someone's always available to go with a uh, hunting party. So if anything happens during a, a hunting party being out, I'll just randomly choose someone to be with them. I did a math, just for fun. Uh, it could uh, The spell could, of course, fail because of the spell failure with the mana region, but I can cast Great Water 69 times a day. 69 nice. times a day? Does it create 18 gallons every time? Uh, no, uh, two every time. Two every time. So 120 gallons would definitely... Uh, get us where we need to be. Yeah, that's not too shabby. When you figure in percentages and stuff, you still end up with a good number. I'm rolling percentile real quick. Okay, we're in the late afternoon now. We've been going like this. Uh, Zira is making sure that people have water as they need it. And then they're filling whatever they have that they can fill with. They've got some random things that they've uh, that they brought with them. But overall, it's just sort of, as they need it, they sort of come to her and ask for water. Uh, the, th the fifth party that went out hunting, I need to roll here to see which one of you is with them. That would be Rook. Okay. As you are out with the hunting party, and they, they find a random, you know, antlered creature to, to take down and bring back. The, the, um, you hear a sound in the distance. I'd like for you to make a listen check. Alright, better than a spot check. I'm gonna spend some channel points on a mulligan for that, because uh, I don't want it to. Okay, well, that's better, but not by much. Let's see, I think that's an 8. Let me double check here, I gotta find it. Yeah, that's an 8. 
<laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. Well, there's an issue now. I rolled a two and a five. What do you want from me? No, it's not your fault. It's not your fault at all. Uh, that just means that I've got to work with it. So, so there's a sound in the distance, and be, by the time you make out what it is, you realize that you are going to have to run back to camp as fast as your armored legs can carry you with a bear behind you. Or not camp, but the group. Screw that. I'll tell them to run. I'm going to fight the bear. You're going to 1v1 a bear. Yup. Okay. Full initiative. Because that's the character. All right, I got a uh, 18 on die. Let me see what my initiative is. My initiative is zero, so 18. Okay, you're first. Okay, um, power attack. Yeah, let me let me give you a description of what's going on. We've got a, a big brown bear that is a large size. It is coming towards you. And okay. so power attack will be happening here. Okay. Oh, actually, I have a question. Um, I know this is a thing, but I don't know how it works. How does fighting defensively work? It's it's the opposite of power attack. You're spending points of your attack towards AC. Okay. So I reduce my chance to hit to get AC. Um, I'll look it up real quick to get the exact number. I think it's two. Yeah, I found it. It's on page 143, bottom left. It's a minus four on attack to gain a plus two dodge to AC. All right, I I'll take that instead of power attack. I was I gonna ask think... if you weren't power attacking. Well, I need to get a sense for this thing's AC before I try and double down on that. It's a bear, so it's not likely going to be hard to hit as it's a big unarmored target. But, you know. All right, so uh, regular defensive fighting. And my hit. All right, it is this minus four. So I didn't roll very well, so th 11. That will miss. Okay, but I still get the AC. Yes, uh, so I'm going to ask you what hits. I'm, I'm not going to ask for your AC. Um, so I'm going to make my attacks real quick. Okay. Yeah, okay. So does a 30 hit? A 30? Yeah, 30. I rolled high. A bear has the ability to roll a 30, and it's not yes. a crit. Welcome to 3-5. Yeah, it's close. <laughs> okay, then. That's high. Yeah, that's real high. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> That's 14 damage from a claw attack. Okay. Yeah. How far away am I from, from Rook there? Uh, other than the people who are running back to the group, no one knows this is going on. Okay. Shoot. Well, I also can't outrun a bear, so, like, at least not mechanically. Um, not unless you're doing the actual run action. I mean, I'm in heavy armor. My run action is still going to be slower than its run action. It's true. So, what is your turn? Well, since running isn't an option, my only other option is fighting. So, I guess I will uh, fight defensively again. And hope that it rolls low. Yeah, an average roll should miss you. Okay, I miss. Okay, does a 20 hit? Yes. Oh, I was wrong then. Yeah. Because having plus, I'm guessing 12, something like that? Maybe that more? Six points of damage. Okay. And then at this point, uh, we'll say that you're close enough to the camp, uh, to the group, just so we can actually have something happen other than you fight a bear. Then uh, the people sprinting back are going, bear, bear, holy crap, bear. <laughs> uh, a uh, bear? What? Uh, Winter, go. Uh, she's gonna send Winter ahead because uh, she's really fast. Will okay. Winter be okay? 
Winter's got the zoomies. Yeah. Uh, she got uh, 40 more speed. Ooh, that's, that's good. Double mine. It's going to be one more round before anyone is able to close with the bear. Yeah, and Esther's going to dash too. Yeah. I mean, should we assume that everybody is able to go help with this? Yes. Uh, the faster members of the group or the closest ones are going to get there first, but we'll go ahead and just say after one round, everyone is in the range they need to be, except necessarily like melee range. Um, pretty sure Winter can make it to melee range. Okay. We'll just have us roll initiative when we are able to be in range. Okay, so we've got uh, Rook again. Okay, I fight defensively. And I cannot roll to save my life. Quite literally. Oh, Twelve. No. Does not hit. Yeah, no surprise. <laughs> okay. Does an 18 hit? No. Not because because of defensive fighting. That is a miss. Okay. So now we're going to um, just add in everyone to the initiative order we already have, which, uh, Rook, what was yours? Was your initiative? It was 18. Kristen, can you type it into chat for me, everyone's initiative? Uh, I'm at, I'm going at two, so if everyone, everyone else wants to join that queue, then we can get you in. Sorry, what am I rolling? Initiative. Uh, 15. <laughs> oh, shit. Um... Well, I rolled a 19 and my modifier is two. Okay, so 21. I misunderstood and just typed it into the chat myself for mine. I suppose that's fine. <laughs> uh, I will put it over here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is right. I'm going to... Uh, would it be easier to have Winter go on your turn, Zira? Uh, yeah. Uh, we did talk about this. I'm sure so we I'm did. I'm for myself. Okay. So that means we're back to... Well, we're at Israel now. We can do whatever Israel needs to do. Yes, um, I am not in, uh, not in range, though, for hand-to-hand, -hand, am I? No, you will not be for another round. Okay, yeah, so the problem is, I gave my longbow to someone in the group. Something on. <laughs> so, uh, I don't have it. So, can, actually, hold up, um, can I... You try to from this distance I have either <coughs> like I have connections with animals right so I have handle animal I also have wild empathy which is like diplomacy with animals so it would be great if I could just try to like talk to it to calm it down and tell it to like you know back off kind of a thing okay it's a valid plan let me tell you how it works specifically because there is a spell that allows you to speak with animals, but then what you have, Wild Empathy, just allows you to use your body language in the same way that you could use a conversation with a person. So then you would just okay. be able to roll Diplomacy, which the way that Diplomacy works in game terms is trying to lower someone's attitude towards you from hostile to friendly in some way, depending on what you roll. Sure. So if you got close enough... You could try it. The problem is, if it's if it's being attacked, then it wouldn't work very easily. It would be mm. taking a penalty, but then the alternative is just standing there while it hits Rook. Right. Um. Actually, uh, yeah, I guess I will do my best to move move closer to it then, and uh, and and try that. Okay, Israel's running. And now we're back yep. to Rook. Okay, well, I will fight defensively. Finally get a good roll. 16. That does hit. Okay. So please take 9 points of slashing damage. Noted. The bear is um, pained by that. Roars out in pain, but it's not grievous. All right. Yeah, that leaves Zira is next, plus Winter. Winter can close into melee and flank if needed. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Winter would just go ahead and try to flank. Good girl. Uh, would she be able to attack on the turn two? 
Uh, I'm going to say that that's going to get her in position just to give the flanking bonus for okay. next round. Yeah, she's going to get in position. And then what are you doing? I'm going to get as close as possible too. Okay. You can close and then attack by next turn. Uh, anyone who is engaging the bear is now getting a plus two on attack. Yeah, uh, she's also drawing uh, one of her uh, darts. And then that goes Lance is next, because he wrote Lance. Mm-hmm. That's my name. <laughs> Let's see. I just need to check the description on this. Um, if I'm firing from range, I'm not flanking, right? Correct. Uh, in fact, unless you've got precise shot, you'll be taking a minus two. In a way, I would have precise shot. I haven't been able to take any of the feats I need yet. Yeah, makes sense. Isn't it minus four for shooting in the melee? It could be. I can look. It is. But okay. is the dog still giving me a plus two? Uh, the plus two is for anyone who is in melee range on the opposite end of something from someone else. Then it is a minus four. Okay. Ugh. Can't hit level four fast enough. We'll get there. I'm in All it for right. the long haul. I'm shooting Abo. Mark off my ammunition. Long bow, long bow, long bow. Well, that was a 19 on die. Uh, so plus five is 24, minus four is 20. Yeah, that's going to hit. Okay. That's going to deal six points of non-magical piercing damage. Okay, a non-magical piercing arrow is... Uh, it grazes the bear's shoulder and leaves a large gash. And uh, if I'm good at this range, I would stay at whatever, whatever range I'm, I'm good shooting at. I am uh, good out to uh, 100 feet, though. Yeah, it seems good. It seems to be working for you. Now we're okay. at Mahal. Uh, you need another round to get where you're going. And then yeah. Bear. That is a definite hit. Another six points of damage. The Bear uh, mauls at you, and and uh, you are kind of bleeding in the upper side of your armor. Me, Mahal? I'm, I'm very confused. I'm you. sorry. I, I meant to say Rook if I didn't say that. Uh, stop. Mm -hmm. Mahal is six points. Yet. Yes. Yes. All right, then. Yeah, I'm down. Okay. It was very heroic. Uh, now we're at um. We're no oh, Israel. Sorry. Israel. Well, I am close enough now. Um. You know, how am I close enough to attack? Yes. Um, uh, everyone's okay. able to close. Uh, at the moment, there's no one between <sighs> any ranged characters and the bear, so there's no issues with range any, with ranged attacks right now. But if, okay. if we're wanting to cover the bear in flanking, then then that's probably more important overall. Okay. Yeah. I will move around to flank. I'll do that this turn. Okay. It is possible to flank at this moment without obscuring the bear. Okay. It is large size after all. It's very large. Yeah. So make okay. that attack. You get a plus two. Uh, which one do you want me to do for that? Uh, whichever. Uh, what weapon are you using? Well, I was debating doing the handle animal or talk to you know um oh, trying to yes. empathize with it is what I was hoping to do. If that's what you want to do, then make your diplomacy check. And I believe it lets you use your wisdom if you want to use your wisdom rather than charisma. So um, just so that there's an awareness, the difficulty of getting something to agree with you in 3.5 is based on its disposition toward you. Mm -hmm. Wild animals start with an unfriendly disposition and they get worse from there. If, uh, and so you used your wild empathy to try and make it like either indifferent or friendly. Like every time you roll a success, you move it one uh, level. There's like a, level. a list of these things. Mm -hmm. um, but it, since we're fighting it and then landing blows on it, it's only going to be getting driven further and further down. I know. That's why I'm I'm 
debating if it's not even worth it and just flanking and taking an attack. I think so. that you know, there are situations where this is a very good strategy. I think that since combat had already been started with this thing and your character would know, it's just not going to, probably yeah. not going to work. Let me look yeah, at the difficulties true. real quick. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling the difficulty, oop, the difficulty is going to be pretty, pretty high. So. Uh, yeah, you would have to roll pretty high. So what I'm see what I'm sensing here, uh, well, Bree, is that you're hoping to either get lucky on the roll or just not make the roll attack. Is that where we're right? At? I, you know what? Let's not make the roll. Um, and I w will use. I have either my uh, scimitar or my kukri that I can use. They're both slashing. Okay. Um, I, what's the damage on those two? The scimitar is one d six. I know that. Correct. So the kukri is one d four. Okay. Uh, choose one, make your attack, and add the modifier. Um, it was two, you said? You get, a, you get a plus two plus your base attack, which as a ranger is two plus your strength. Two. Well, I'll roll for the uh, attack. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Uh-oh. A, f a five. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I don't think that's going to add up. I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it's, it'll happen. So, Rook, make your, uh, is that working 3-5 again? My health goes down by 1. That's what yeah. I thought. I, I, I don't remember if there's a there percentile. Aren't, yeah, there aren't death saving throws in 3-5. In it is, you lose 1 HP every round that you are bleeding out, that you are not stabilized, until you reach negative 10 HP, at which point you die. Yes, that's or right. Or I think by your rules, negative con score HP. Yes, which is closer to Pathfinder. Yeah, Tristan's right, and uh, it's just been a long time since it's mattered. But hey, Rook, if you take Die Hard as your next feat at third level, then you get to stay conscious while you're at negative HP and mm. fight. That's awesome. Yeah. Can't take it. Okay, now we're at Zira. You are now uh... in melee range. Yeah, uh, first, uh, Winter's going to attack. Um, that's a whopping 2, plus 5, because of the flanking, so that's not going to hit. Okay. And then what's your attack? Um, she is going to go to the bear and flurry blows. So two attacks. And she's going to uh, try to uh, stun the bear on the first attack. Oh. Uh... Yeah, nope. That's a, that's a five on a die. That's not happening. The invincible bear. And then what about the second attack? Uh, that's a twelve hits. Is that the total? Yeah, that's the total. Does not hit. Nope. Okay, Lance. This fight is going rough. <laughs> you All still right. have a clear shot at this bear, so no minus four. No minus four? Okay. That is a 14. Is that your exact total? Yes. Does not hit. Oh, well. <laughs> That's all I got. Mahal. I'm just going to swing my axe. Okay, you are standing next to Rook's body. What'd you say? I'm just saying that you are next to Rook, who is lying on the ground. Okay. Does a 16 hit? It does. During this fight, I will be sending some some Discord messages, just FYI. That is eight slashing damage. Okay, the bear cries out in pain. Everybody having fun rolling nothing but single digits on their dice? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it's the best. Bad. It's been awesome. I've been rolling that bad. My 19 was nice, and then I rolled like a 7. Super fun. Okay, that's the messages I'm going to send for now. Okay. Oh, apparently there's a percentile roll to see if you lose that hit point each round. That's what I thought. Oh, I know. But it's just not like the death saving fr throws, because you get to do it until you reach dead. No. Yep. Okay, we are at... Uh... Mahal. Did you make your attack, Mahal? Uh, yeah, it was eight slashing damage. That's right, okay. Then we were at bear. The bear turns to Mahal and misses. Yep. Not even not even lying about that. <laughs> uh, 
Isarel, your turn. All right. <clears throat> uh, well, I guess I will try to attack again. I'm going to send you a message real quick. Oh, okay. Are you two weapon fighting at this point? Um, I can, yeah, because I've got a... Got okay. both of those, I suppose. Although... So you should be able yeah. to yeah. draw the draw the second weapon and be able to attack with both. Yep, I totally forgot that I took that. It'll give you an extra attack. You won't get your bonuses, but it's still a second chance to roll the die. Your first attack will still get its bonuses. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um... Gosh. Uh, I am going to attack, then. Recheck your message. I did. Okay, you're gonna um, you're gonna attack. Uh, yeah, I think I am. Okay. Okay, so sorry, I have uh two weapon fighting then, so uh I have to roll once for for uh attack, right? You roll once for each weapon, and then ah, you, gotcha. I believe, you take a specific negative, which I think is like it says negative two. Two. That's my... right. Okay. Okay. Okay, so first roll. It's kind of a gun. Seriously? All right, well, that's an eight for the scimitar, I guess. Okay, that's an then, eight plus base attack would be ten plus strength wouldn't take it. Okay, yeah, that would be miss. Yeah, uh, that didn't work either. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. I'm rolling um, all those a two. Yep, we're rolling single uh, digits today. So dumb. Single digits day. Hey, Rook, it's your turn. What are you doing? I'm gonna... S uh, I think I have to stand back up. And that's my turn. Suddenly, Rook is standing. Could somebody heal him? It doesn't seem like there's any reason for it, except that he's just infused with strength. Is there something we should know about the messages we receive? Like, do we seem... I'll explain it afterwards. Like, I'll send you each messages after the session's over. Okay. So, uh, Rook is up and is ready to go. Uh, just to make sure I understand this correctly, standing up from prone is a move action, right? <laughs> Let me look that up, unless Tristan's got it more handy. I've got the book in my hand. Well, that sounds pretty handy. <laughs> Actions in combat. Obstacles. Movement. I was going to heal you, but I guess I don't have to know. Double movement. <laughs> Minimum movement. Yep, found it. Uh, it is standing up from prone. Is a move action and provokes an attack of opportunity. Apparently. Yes. Want want. I got a two on the die. Okay. I think we're going to trade roll numbers, guys. Yeah. That would be fun. Why is standing up from prone not in the movement section? <laughs> yeah, it's a little weird. So if that's uh, just I found it. Action. I found it on page 141. Yeah, which is not the movement section. Yeah, but it's the, it's the turns, like it's the actions and combat section where it lists all the right, standard but that's movement. just the So that's just the table, which gives you a base description. Here we go. Move action zone 142. Draw sheath. Move. Manipulate. Direct. Stand up. Yes. So 143 is where the actual description is. Wait, what was that? So uh, I believe that means that you can also attack. Is that right? No. What is when this? using uh, Die Hard, you can only take a single move action. Oh, yeah. Uh, action or like. Quick action. The only benefit is that if it's a move action, it doesn't cause me to lose a hit point. Oh, there we go. Uh, that means that next is Zira. Uh, we're just going to attack again. And I'm going to use another die. Hopefully this one is luckier. Oh, it is. Uh, 19. That's a hit. Uh, Winter does uh, seven uh, piercing damage. Oh. Oof. Okay. Winter gets a big old bite out of the out of the bear's backside, or leg, if that's less weird. Yeah. 
Uh, Brooke, you're, 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 you're standing? Uh, uh, you need healing? Should I attack? Uh, okay, I'm just gonna punch. <laughs> uh, she's gonna flurry. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're both hits. I rolled a 17 on a 19, uh, on oh. both dice. Awesome. The number you want is a 15, just so everyone knows. Sorry, what was that? Uh, now that we've had combat long enough, I'm gonna tell you the AC, which is 15. I believe it's 1d4. 5 on the first one. Um, 4 on the other. Okay, the bear is very clearly injured at this point. It's favoring the arm that you're punching. It's it's uh, having some trouble standing on the leg that's gotten bitten. It's got uh, an arrow wound on it. We are at Mahal. No, we're at Lance. Alright, then I'm going to... Try again with the arrow shooting. Uh, is one, the way one clear? Note, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. If any of you choose to say so when you are benefiting from the thing that I sent you, you can. Okay. So that's why I want to know do I feel something? Yes. Like I know I'm benefiting, so what do I feel? Yeah, so if, if we're saying what you got, uh, you are feeling a bit of insight about the best way to deal damage to this bear. It's it's something along the lines of uh, the same sort of insight you get with a sneak attack. I see. So I just feel like something is guiding my hand toward the soft parts. Yes. Okay. Well, here we go. As I say, I'm not sure what's up, but I feel like I know just where to shoot this thing. Uh, and that is a, ow, 20 to hit. Yep. Ooh. And roll. Nice. Uh, maximized, so 10 points of damage. Okay, the arrow strikes the bear right in the center of its chest. It rears back for a second on its hind legs. Aha. Uh -huh. Follow I'm up! Gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna attack and I'm gonna use the bonus you sent me. That, that is bonus 16. is a uh, attack and damage plus one, by the way. Uh, I didn't see the attack bar. I mean, the damage bar. I only saw the attack. Yeah, so in your case, you are just feeling a little bit more inspired during this fight. It could even be the effects of currently leveling up to level three. Okay. Well, with that bonus, it's a it, uh, it's 16. So. That is a hit? Yep. And that is... is uh, Matt, it's not strong point. 14 damage. Oh, man. I uh, rolled 10 on the die, so... We are... We are bearless. Your, your axe strikes it in the center of its chest, splintering the arrow in two, and felling it. It falls backwards as Winter rolls out of the way. Good dog. You got it out of the way. Rook, you have anything you want to say to the group? You, first, I'm going to use Lay on Hands to give myself four hit points, so I'm no longer negative. Uh, and I'm going to spit on the bear, because I did not like that thing. And say, Thank you for coming to my aid. I didn't think we'd be able to outrun it, so I stood my ground as best I could. It was... Yeah, you can't really outrun a bear. Especially not in half plate. It was good to lead it to the villagers, but how are you standing? <sighs> Perhaps Cord has blessed me this day. I was able to persevere through my wounds. What What is your hit point total, by the way? One. Okay. <laughs> Yes, it does feel like that's what happened. I I will say, while this was a scary situation, we do now have some bear meat. Yes, that is the um, upside to the situation. Bree, since you did not uh, think that it was the right thing to use the bonus I sent you, I'm going mm -hmm. to give you a plus two in diplomacy for the next two sessions. Cool. But essentially, because we're reaching level three, everyone had some sort of moment of inspiration. 
You should assume, we're not done with the session quite yet, but you should assume that you are level three when you come into next session, all of you. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's taken care of, and the bear can also be eaten. So, there is a group of villagers who are carrying various carcasses on sticks that they can roast when it's nighttime. So clearly, they're they're starting to get a feel for things, and they know what they're doing now. Yeah. I'm dragging that bear back, and I'm gonna eat the heck out of that thing once it's <laughs> Yeah, cooked. we're gonna we're gonna turn that into as much as we can. <laughs> I think I, I'm... a couple hundred pounds. You're gonna need help. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna need help, Minimum. but still, I'm I'm also, gonna eat it and I'm gonna turn its fur into a cloak. I'm I'm wearing this thing. Also, bear meat is actually can be really really bad for you, so cook the crap out of it. Yeah. Just saying. Horrible diet. I'm immune to disease. Who cares? D and D. I can eat this thing raw. Uh. Well, I okay. Like very much. Gross. I didn't say I was. I said I could. I much prefer the cooked meat. They used to cook to eat. I'm just imagining a paladin asserting dominance by eating raw meat. <laughs> I mean, I, in <laughs> in games where I played an evil paladin, I have done it. It's true. I've seen it. Great minds, right? <laughs> I asserted dominance over Derek's character by eating Ooh. terrible things. <laughs> it's funny. All right. That's not what I wanted. I typed in meat. I wanted to type in weight. <laughs> yeah, 600 pounds. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say it's more than 200. Yeah, that's going to be carried by a group of five villagers with two sticks. I mean, I think that's within my drag capacity, maybe. <laughs> but not very fast. We still have a few hours yeah. before nightfall. I mean, I would be helping, but yeah, I'm not going to do it myself because I would want to actually carry it so as not to uh, to damage my new cloak in the making. So we're going to say that that's, that's it for the hunting stuff for today uh, because, you know, now there's a bear to eat. And uh, before long, a few hours later, we reach an area where uh, we need to make a spot check to see if we can find the caves. Okay. I'll leave that to somebody else. We're at the top of a large hill, and that's that gives us a vantage point. I will roll. Hopefully, I don't do single yeah, digits. Same. I've been rolling good, so without my without a bonus, I'll still roll. Yeah, that's uh, right. twenty. Nineteen. Um, twelve. Not terrible, but yeah, those are good enough rolls. Uh, the nineteen and the twenty that you see off in the distance with your keen eyes. The, the signs of some holes in the ground-ish. It's, it's kind of like the hollow that you were in, but it's much deeper, and there's some, there's some good cavery going on there. It's, it's going to be... <laughs> at least... Oh, what, do you, what do your dwarf eyes see? Cavery. <laughs> They're taking the people to, to uh, cavery. He doesn't see into the distance as well as elves, unless it involves caves in the distance. That's fair. So I want to hear Zan describe what he sees. Um, like, describe what the caves look like? I'm not really sure what you want me to describe, to be honest. However you wish to describe it, whatever your character's perspective on it would be. Uh, well, he's short, so he just sees it. He's it, but he just sees, sees these holes, and they... They just... Uh, just... Covered, surrounded by stone... And creating a a almost a shadow over the doorway and making it stick out from the rest of the ground. Is that good? Sure. There's, there's a reason I don't DM. Right. So <laughs> so uh, forget your name a lot, Lance. That's right. You you ask the dwarf what he sees, and he matter of factly says he sees holes in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> From his description, I was about to ask if it was some sort of ruin. Hmm, rolls percentile. Is there a mine here? <laughs> okay, uh, as we get closer, let's make another check just to see if there are wildlife in the cave while I do the same. Yes, cool. I definitely want to do that. Should we do listen? Yeah, what are we doing? Anything you want. Alright. Uh, spot again, so... Uh, 16. Um, 
Listen was 16. Spot was not 16. <laughs> there we go. That's better. I did a spot and I rolled. Crap, what's it? 25. Hey, fortunately, we don't see or hear anything. And it is enough caves that if we clown car it, we can get everyone in. Well, good. Yeah, and while we're doing the cave stuff, there is an AMA from the chat. Our favorite monster or creature from 3-5 and why? So for those of us who played a lot of 3-5, like myself and Tristan especially. Favorite monster or creature in 3-5 and why? Mm. Rust monster. Man, I kind of just want to say it's the Beholder. A lot of the reason I love that creature... A, it's a powerful monster that's terrifying to fight against. But B, I, I played a character once uh, who was part of a party that destroyed a Beholder, and he hadn't been there at the moment that they killed it. Like, at, at the time that they fought it, I, had, um, I hadn't been in that session. And so, in that game, when you're not in a session, your character just disappears and then reappears when you come back. And that they, you can just have in character explanations for oh so and so is gone tell them what happened in character um and so the rest of the party told him about the fight against the beholder and he refused to believe any of them they like showed him like some of them had cut eye stalks off the thing and like see we got these eye stalks from it he's like no 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 that's that's bs i don't believe you such a creature doesn't exist and that was just sort of his shtick for that game. Was anytime anybody mentioned beholders, you'd be like, oh, you mean that thing that doesn't exist? Uh, I'll answer, and then if anyone else wants to, but I I kind of like the idea of liches in D&D. I've, I've yeah. had a recurring lich in some campaigns uh, that shows his head every once in a while, or his cultist, and it's just sort of a cool idea. I mean, I'm just going to go with dragons, because yeah. dragons... But what color? <laughs> I mean, depends. Do you want to be fighting them, or do you want to be friends with them? Well, I know the, I know the color if it's friends. I mean, red, probably f for fighting, because that's just the most classic. And then bronze are just awesome. But, uh, just, you don't want to go with gold, man. You aim for the top. I'm going for bronze. Bronze yeah. are awesome. I'm going for silver. Gold oh. dragons are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Danielle, did you have a favorite monster? Uh, yeah, the Rust Monster. Um, in uh, a previous uh, 3.5 campaign I played in, um, uh, the DM had set uh, up, up this uh, incredible uh, vault made of metal, and uh, there was no way in. We had to do this challenge, and I was jokingly uh, saying out of character that, oh, I wish the Rust, Rust Monster we thought was there. We could just use that one. They all looked at each other, went back and got it. And went to the vault. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. That's how you do it. I, I ruined the DM's plan. I didn't even mean to. They just kind of... Yeah. A good just DM doesn't happen. care. Uh, he had spent hours preparing uh, oh. for like a, a dungeon, and uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> a good DM will still not be upset if the players are having fun. Which is not to uh, say that it's invalid to be upset about something. He was working on his masters, and he took time off to do that. Oh. <laughs> I ended a campaign that. during my masters, and then didn't start one until I was done. Yeah, I felt so bad. I think I was just doing like some casual stuff on the, in the meantime. Okay, uh, the caves are working. Uh, the system that we've set up with food and cooking and water, all of that is working. The lines of communication is working for the most part. There's a few conflicts here and there, people just getting tired of each other's faces. So definitely that's a situation where we send like uh, Rook or some other muscly guy in the group to go and deal with that. Or or even better yet, Zira to go punch someone in the face. Yay! I, mean, I, I can punch pretty good too. Fortunately, it's nothing too serious tonight. But the farther we go, there might end up being some situations worth running through. Because you're, you're, you can tell that while the villagers themselves tend to get along, there, is, there are some pre-existing dynamics, we'll say, between a few of them, as well as just some conflicts between them and the people they don't know. And it's made worse by the, by the fact, you know, the stress of the situation and the scarcity of food and water. Well, not water, but food. 
Yeah, I guess that much... Bears have a crap ton of meat on them, but it's probably only gonna last, like, a day with, what, 155 people? Mm -hmm. With the hunting and foraging that was going on throughout the day, which slowed you down just a little bit, but not too much, we can assume that everyone's at least going to bed not starving. And that's as much as you hoped for getting, you know, from the get-go here. Yeah. So we can go ahead to the next day if you want, and we can abbreviate a little bit because you've set up all of this. Is there anything in particular we're wanting to accomplish in the meantime? Uh, for example, the fact that you are officially level 3 even though we haven't leveled up. Anything like that that you wanted to roleplay or work through? Or investigate, even? I mean, I would maybe like to make like a heal check or something to try and accelerate my natural recovery. That is entirely right. possible. Uh, you can just ask Sierra to do that. Well, I could do it myself. You just could... drop 47 good berries on him. <laughs> drop I mean, I or like, like feeding grapes or something? I mean, just throw them at his face. <laughs> <laughs> Be healed! <laughs> Actually, not a bad bad idea there, Tristan. I am chock full of good ideas. No, I like all the ideas you guys come up with. I've got enough to worry about. So with that going on, uh, Rook, I'll let you know if you need to worry about your hit point total, and then we'll work out all the things that you did. Uh, it could matter in five minutes. It could matter in three sessions. We'll see. So... So yeah, we're traveling and and we're trying to keep everything going, keeping everyone getting along and following the chain of command that we've established. Uh, Rook, uh, the uh, the couple. Look at their name again. Iden. I D D O N. Yes, the Idens uh, have sort of befriended you a little bit. They're kind of, kind of walking with you because they are concerned for your well-being, and and Mrs. Iden is wondering, you know, would, she, would you like for her to find some berries for you, make you a snack or anything? Uh, I'll be fine. Just need to get some rest once I find a place to stop. We, re we really don't mind. There's nothing else for us at home. It's just our house now. You take care of yourself. Do they say that with an earshot of anyone else? Uh, they've been yeah. pretty open about it. They said it to, I think, you and Isarel, and now they're saying it to Rook a little bit even more clearly that they're going home to an empty house. How old are they? You said middle-aged? Yeah, middle-aged, possibly uh, late 40s, early 50s. Are you, So are they within earshot? Um, they said something in passing to you, but since right, yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't that they were going home to an empty thing. They just said this is personal for us. They said they said it was personal, and and, and th this village is all they have left. But if you want to make a listen check, you can. Okay. Um, I would like to do that. Bad rolls all night. Yay! Get those yep. out of the way. Thirteen. I got an eight. Hey, Isarel, you hear them talking to him, and, and you, you think you hear some sort of comments about home, but you're not sure what they said. Okay. So, Rook, do you have a response to them telling you this? They're not necessarily, like, trying to confide in you, but they just feel like they, they need to say it because they, they want someone to take care of. I wish I'd rolled better. Oh. <laughs> I know what I was gonna do. <laughs> like the idea is, please just let us, you know, give you something or, or something, because when we go home, our house is empty. If it'll make you feel better, fine. But in my opinion, it's best to start focusing on rebuilding There's not much rather than mowing what was lost. Yes, we we can live our lives, live out our years in the village, but the the light of our life is gone. I see. Uh, that's not something I can return to you, but... Or even a pain I can understand, but I do... You, know, you have my condolences. 
Thank you. She was such a sweet girl. What's her name? Narala. Hmm. I see. Well. Yes, she was such a sweet girl. Such a good temperament, so well behaved. <laughs> uh. They turn to you. The father turns to you and, and seems uh. a little bit confused by your reaction. We've met. She's still alive. Okay, they're aghast. Continue. Uh, she's the one that went and got us. If it wasn't for her, you all'd still be in that camp. Rumor was you were part of a mercenary crew. Uh, more or less. And she came and found this company and then hired you? Mm. Once again, more or less. She talked us into it. Hasn't been... There's not much promised in the way of pay, although anything that could be offered hey, is appreciated. The dad, I the, said, the, her father looks very proud that she was able to finagle this through using nothing but word. Of course, there has been some amount of a, uh, you know, of a deal arranged. It just, you know. I'll just kind of leave it at that. They're, they're all ears if there's anything you want to tell them about their daughter who is suddenly alive. Well, to the best of my knowledge, uh, she should be safe and uh, at home waiting for you. We, uh, she took us to the, the village and uh, we asked her to stay there with the, you know, the cart driver who brought us that far. Were there any what? other survivors? If Norella survived, surely there's others. Uh, there was one man whose name I've forgotten. Rowan. Um, what? Rowan. Rowan, of, of course. I don't know how I would have forgotten that. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the name of Rowan, you are you familiar with him? Yes, sweet man, sweet man. He lives not far from our home. I'm glad to he's, hear that he's okay. He's okay in body, but... Uh, the stress has of the event has gotten to him somewhat. Same as all of us, too. It's understandable. Thank you for giving us this good news. My pleasure. They're they're overcome right now, and they're going to go and cope. Because <laughs> it's funny. Okay, now we're reaching the river. Water problems are no more, so, uh, Zero, you can stop exhausting yourself every day. Yeah, and, uh, well, I mean, she's not gonna stop. Uh, she's got, just gonna use good bears instead now. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, you know, how many of those can you make in a day? After doing math again. Is it first level? Yeah, so, uh, she can make four, and then, uh, yeah, like three, and then three again, and then... Down to two, yeah. Nothing Less. shabby. Uh, one good piece of news here is now that you've reached the river, hunting's going to become easier. But yeah. uh, after they're done splashing around in the water, bathing and and whatnot, separating in groups and just mingling for a while, uh, dating simulator and all that, uh, you are approached by a few of the people who have, who have uh, shown themselves to be trustworthy and dependable. And they're asking, what do you want to do about the 50 or so people who are not from their village? There's no home for them in the village. There's not room for them. And uh, one of them reminds you of something. The fact that you are currently equal distance between uh, the village to you and waypoint to you. So we're on yeah. the right side of the village? Uh, yeah, you're to the right. You're, you're between the P and the O, and you're at the river. Thereabouts. It, it's hard to know for certain. But okay. they have a general idea that you're probably not that far from Waypoint in comparison to the village. They're wondering, uh, they very much would like to have the group of you, or at least most of you, uh, their words, not mine, leading you back to their village and helping them out with things because of your weapons and your expertise in combat and your leadership skills. But that maybe it would be a good idea to send the 50 or so, and they seem pretty adamant about it, to Waypoint instead. So I know we've skipped ahead to the river, but... Did I skip anything for you, Tristan? 
Well, I was hoping that when we were holed up in the cave, I would be able to address the fact that we have people not from the fishing village. Okay, and let's have that conversation. I mean, it can be happening here. It's whatevs. Um, but yes, I do, uh, as uh, Lance, I wanted to, to ask them, you know, we know about a hundred of you are supposed to be going back to the fishing village, but I need... I don't know what we're doing with the rest of you. If you want to go there and see if if they'll take you in as well, or if there are other places you want to be returned to. Okay, it's going to take them some time to deliberate on this. Since we're having this conversation at the river, there's no problem there. They're just sort of hanging out and enjoying, you know, an afternoon off yeah. from uh, not being slaves. I'm going to say... We're, like, where... Where are you all from? Are you all from a singular village, or are you from several places? Are you ready for the flood storm that is their answer? I'll be asking, like, whoever among them seems to be the, the most... Oh, like, okay. I thought you were asking like, I'll all be, 50. Yeah, I'll be asking one person, but just one who, you know... I'll pretty much just pick it random more unless one sticks out as, like, a, a leader amongst their group. If you eventually are wanting to find out just overall where they're all from... You'll get all kinds of answers. Some oasis, some uh, r some random village somewhere. And they were just passing through, uh, which is rare and stupid. But a fair amount are from Badlands. From the Badlands. Badlands Oof, and, that... and uh, Hotbox. Well, all right. I'm going to, after learning this, I'm going to pull Gaz aside. Uh, and give him, uh, like, an, uh, you know, talk to him quietly for a minute. Uh, as far as where we're taking these people, I don't know if any city or village would be able to support an influx of what would essentially be 50, you know, homeless people. Like, most cities aren't built to be able to support that just showing up on our doorstep. Perhaps we could... Bit backwards there, mate. Fifty's not that many for a city. Thousands of people live there, and hundreds are more already homeless. Does anyone's backstory tie them to the province of Kor? Mine does not. No. Okay. Well, I don't know much about Waypoint. It's not particularly a large spot on the map. Uh, it's, um... Although... If... Hmm. We could make a roll on what on what we know about Waypoint. I could roll to see what anyone in this group knows about Waypoint. I thought it was a city, and then they told me it's not. Uh, they being the orcs. I mean, I'm going to be going off the assumption I know nothing, because I haven't been there. Well, I just like, made I've a really been good roll. until recently. So, on my percentile, you have at least one citizen of Waypoint, or former citizen of Waypoint, who is going to... Uh, be willing to answer your questions if you are seeking them, seeking out answers. All right. All I know is we're a lot closer to Waypoint than we are right now than if we go to the village and then head back to Waypoint. Agreed. But can we have... But only one of our four has the ability to make extra food that may be needed. So... Could be the best option is to take them all to the fishing village, then get themselves reestablished there, and figure out where they want to go from then. It's not a problem. Unless they pay us to make it our problem. They've got buildings, they've got the river for food, they've got a bunch of people who know what they're doing. Well, we can find out more about Waypoint, but if it's not able to take these people in, then... I'm just talking about the fishing village. I'm not even talking about Waypoint right now. I mean, the fishing village certainly can't take them. Look, there. we have to go to the fishing village. That's what we got hired to do. If they want to go to Waypoint, they're going to have to split off without us. Maybe at least get them to the fishing village. Tents, food, get them fed and, you know, able to make their kind of trip again. Before send them off. That's my thoughts. Sure, they're closer to Waypoint now, but there might not be in any, you know, order to make it. 
This is a fair point. Present them the option, but I don't recommend they take it. So we can't split up to go with them. All this good a, points. This is the conversation that if anyone else in the group heard it, they could interject. I mean, I, if I'm talking this way, I'm definitely keeping it quiet. Well, I mean, this group of five. I mean, I was under the impression the others were off doing things, but if they're not, then they could be uh, part of this conversation. I imagine for the sake of roleplay, it wouldn't hurt for them to be able to interject if they wanted to. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Even uh, if uh, we're drawing off that pre-existing rapport between Brook and Gaz. Yeah. Quick uh, question. We were not going to any place in core, right? Or we got sidetracked doing this quest because we had to go to Avrin after, right? You right. were wanting to go to Avrin. Correct. And there was okay, two cool. ways to do that. <clears throat> yeah. We'll be going to Avrin via Waypoint. Is it's the closer route. Oh, we dear. could go to Avrin via Waypoint, and yes, it does seem to be the closer route. However, our wagon here is going back to Gamut. We paid Dude. him to take us there. And it's going to be faster to ride the wagon to Gamut and then head to Avrin from there than to walk from here to Avrin. Fair point. I'm going to walk into their little huddle over here and say, I think we should just take them all back to the, the fishing village. I'm sure that they can start... I'm sure some people could put others up, and if people really want to leave on their own to go back to wherever they're from around, you know, the, the world, they can do that on their own. Yeah, see? He's a real speaking sense. It's only safer. I, I would love to ha have everyone go back to where they come from, but we don't have the time, and as much as I hate to say it, because I know it's it'd be nicer to help people, but we didn't technically promise that. I don't know how to speak for them, but I don't think there's anything to go back to out in the Badlands or the Hotbox. We visited those places. Awful. Ugh. I grew up basically in the Hotbox. Not a fan. So, yeah. they can just look at this as a new life and better place. They got I was friends. Never, I was never suggesting taking them all back to where they've come from, but trying to get them to a place that could support them was my idea. They'll just be a slightly bigger community than they were before. I'm with Isaru. Yep, I I think we that's the best way to do it. After all, there's a reason that cities uh, became cities. They weren't always that way. What about you two? You mean three? I just shot the dog. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think we should do with her? Uh, Winter isn't sure, and so am I. Well, they, I assume that she's licking his face at this point because he's getting right up in there. Uh, I think that it's definitely best to start, as Israel said, take him back to the fishing village. You think that's good? Uh, sure. Uh, I mean, we we're supposed to bring them back, but um, the others, though. Um... All right, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the others. Mm -hmm. They're gonna go to the fishing village too. Oh, okay, we're going to Avrin, right? That's our ultimate destination. Uh, if any of them want to go with us, they could, potentially. But I don't know. We paid for the wagon for us, and that's gonna be the quickest way to get to Avrin. Uh, Zan's unable to type, but his character agrees with that. Oh, okay. He's not unable to talk, so he typed. Oh, shit. You know, it didn't really take that long to, you know, just walk up to Waypoint and uh, up to Avrin. It's on the way. Take a damn sight longer than you know, going by wagon. It took us four days by wagon to get him here to Gamut. Gamut from Gamut here to the fishing village. That's with a wagon. So without that, it'll take us more than a week to get past Marvin. And then we still gotta get past Lanyar and up to Avrin. That's going to be another three days at least. So you're looking at 11, 12 days walking. Call it two weeks. Yeah, if you Four, remember Narala's journey. Yeah. Well, these people have been out their homes for over a month. Well, 
about a month because they got tuck. Then she walked up, spending at least two weeks getting from up to Marvin and then to over to Gamut. She found us. And then we had to come back down. It took us a week to get there because it was four days on the wagon and then another three days on foot. And now we've been out here already two more days. Yeah, you make a good point. I'm not saying that we can't do it. I'm just saying that it don't make as much sense. I don't think. But perhaps you have an argument that topples me. My argument would be that we would have more places to stop for possible supplies or chances of making coin by moving through that many cities. Whereas Gambit, Gambit to Avril would be pretty much a straight shot with no real stops in between. Ah, but we do have a reputation, Gamut. I'm sure there'd, it'd be easy to pick up some coin there. Yeah, and they have a... I look around and make sure absolutely no one will hear this. A vampire problem, and I don't want them trying to wrangle us into that again. I'm more worried about their very volatile uh, governmental situation. Also that. That place Which is bound to want to go there. What? If the place becomes a big old riot because there's fuckers what run it and putting their foot in their mouth all over the place and taking money where it ain't theirs, then it's going to be problems for my parents. Right. <sighs> so we're going to get it. That's kind of, yeah, that's kind of necessary now. I mean, that's my vote. I'm I'm honestly still with with Lance on this one. Yeah, well, he that's that makes three of us. Pretty sure Zan agreed with you as well. Uh, Mahal did. So, mm -hmm. uh, Zira, do you have any additional thoughts? Uh, I'm I'm just gonna go with the group on this. Okay. That works. We get to the fishing village and then we reevaluate again. Ask them what they won't do. Bottom line, fishing village seems like the next stop. Yes. Bye. I will say one more thing before we close up the session that uh, as you're wrapping up your meeting, which could could be even close to a half hour meeting just the five of you, well six of you because of winter, and you, you notice that there's a group of people who seem to either have known each other before or just seem to be close who are all saying their goodbyes taking whatever random belongings they have like, you know, stick weapons or whatever and they're heading north, they said that they're going to go to waypoints. We can give them the option, but we're not going with them. Yeah, it All seems right. like Good at least luck. one of them is from there, and they say thank you to Zira for wishing them luck. Uh, she, uh, how many are going? Looks like a group of about a dozen, about twelve. Yeah, uh, she, uh, I rolled for good berries because she casted it four times. Okay. They uh, so it. she, uh, she got sixteen, so she's gonna give, uh, uh, one to each. She has four left. Okay. Uh, and they cool. should keep you going for at least a day. Thank you very much, nice lady. You're welcome. They're walking off saying, she was such a nice lady. Say goodbye, Winter. <laughs> and that dog sure was cute. Uh, um... I feel to mention how many friends Winter's made, by the way. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. I mean, it's like the emotional support animal for like a hundred plus people. Right. I think that's pretty <laughs> dang important. Can't put that aside and, and ignore that. Um, yeah. I guess there is one last thing I guess I'll add. I mean, uh, I mean, I suppose letting them go on their own isn't too bad. We are out of orc country now and they should be left alone by them regardless. There's, there's not necessarily a road but there is a beaten path to waypoints. So the only thing they would have to watch out for is just make sure they don't have any scrapes with wildlife. But that's so, not a concern, really. Yeah, but before they leave, like that, that group leaves with, with the one who's from waypoint, I will try and offer that path to the rest of them because if they want to go now, this is their best shot, having someone that can actually lead the way. This seems like the group that wants to go uh, everyone else seems like they're going to try and find their own way somewhere or, or another. They don't really have any interest in core. There's a All few right. who want to get back to the Badlands, only a few because everyone else is smart. And then a few of the people who are 
just kind of talking about different places they're hearing about that they might try, such as a few who are interested in gamuts. Hmm. Uh, anyone who's heading back to the Badlands, uh, I'll tell them that Trapper's Camp is uh, a better place than it had been uh, when they were likely last there. So it may be worth a, worth a look. Exactly one person asks you, does that mean that uh, Alpheus is no longer there? Yes, we um, sought his removal. I hope you removed the, more than just him. Oh yeah, whole crew. And the one he was um, paying. I'm, I'm in his head, but okay. Um... Yeah, I think I, I... I don't know if it was... If I went for the torso or the head, but uh, something like that. He nods with appreciation. He's, he seems to be the only person who's been to Trapper's Camp within the past year. In fact, he shakes your hands. Hmm, thank you. And I went somewhat, because I'm still very wounded. <laughs> <laughs> You've got 2 HP now. Yeah. He's actually curious about a few things, but we can start next session with that if you want. Oh, uh, here, uh, uh Sarah's gonna stuff uh, four uh, good berries in his mouth. <laughs> eat, uh, eat these. <laughs> You're worth one HP each. Yeah. All right. So I'm like, oh, I three. forgot. <laughs> that puts you at eight. So I had one, and then the next day took over. So that's a long rest. That gives me two because I'm level, th or what do you mean three? Because we're level three. We just haven't applied to that one yet. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you are level three. Uh, oh, can't nine. you do, like, Excel recovery with uh, heal checks? And there was also that. Yeah, the long-term care. Yeah, Sierra could do that. Definitely. Okay. Uh, with the rapport you have with him, I was assuming that was sort of going on. Like, she could be helping, but I will be trying to do it myself, just because yes. that's the character. Self-sufficiency in the hot box. Yeah, she's not allowing that. She would be helpful. She would help you. Yeah, she's insistent, it seems. Now I can actually attack with my fucking rapier. <laughs> okay, I want to I want to start off uh, next session with just doing a little bit more uh, role play with the people, such as the guy from Trapper's Camp, and then we can get to the village and then go from there. So thanks All right. for coming to the session. Thanks for staying up, Danielle. Thanks everyone for making time for this. Thank you for DMing. So, I'll see you all, hopefully, I don't think next week, but the week after, I think is my next availability. And uh, we should definitely raid someone, but uh, first, say goodbye to the chat. Thank you for showing up. I'm going to take one more mulligan. For your health roll? Absolutely. <laughs> wow. Because I'm not taking a one. I absolutely changed that for a nine.